Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with both this week's theme of reimagined covers and today's exploration of a specific song, checking out Paradise Lost's version of Everything But The Girl's Missing. Everything But The Girl had created a spacious, somber, dancey pop track and I don't expect Paradise Lost to be doing that, so it's going to be interesting to see how they completely put a new spin on it with their style. Let's dive into it and see what Paradise Lost is bringing to the table today. Okay. A step off the train. I'm walking down your street again. The melody's the same. We have a little bit of that woodblock sound. It's not as dominant in the percussion. It's used a bit more sparingly, but I also don't I think it's just a I think it's just a steel snare with the snare turned off. The melody is the same from the vocals. It's a lot more grounded, uh, larger focus on lower tones across the board. And not only that, aside from the violin that just came in, we've also had warmer, darker tones, timbre-wise. Going for the same thing on the revisiting of this chorus, or sorry, this verse in a bridge. Spacious vocals with synth behind. Synths are totally different on this though, and we do have the large bells in the backgrounds. I think that's the same bass line too. So the warble there introduces a little bit of tension through a quasi-dissonance.
all right. So yeah, they um they took a little bit of a different approach to it, primarily aiming to find the darkness within the original track and lean into it more heavily. I think it's interesting not necessarily where they deviate from it, which does create a, a very different vibe, but also where they choose to not deviate from it. We haven't listened to a lot of Paradise Lost. In fact, I think a majority of the reactions on the channel have been for covers because we also did a cover of theirs of Depeche Mode, I think, in the past as well. Hmm. I don't remember. We checked out uh, No Hope in Sight. No, that was an original. Who am I thinking of then? I don't know. A aside from that, we checked out Draconian Time. Which def... Oh, that was a full album. Who am I thinking of then? I don't know. Anyways. This is moodier. This is sort of in the industrial metal realm of things. But like I said, it, it's interesting where they choose not to deviate. The melody line is identical for the most part. I don't think there were very many moments that deviated from that, aside from the octave shift. Everything is about an octave down, something that fits closer to his vocal range, I'm going to assume but also something that just feels more natural for the industrial metal area. He puts that reverb on his vocals, and it just sounds perfect for industrial metal, especially for whatever reason I'm thinking of dancey industrial metal, where this kind of takes a slower, more moodier element to it. The bass line is not replicated all the time, but is replicated... Sometimes the bridge goes for that same isolated feeling of vocals against a synthesizer, though they choose to change the synthesizer, um, timbre, and composition. Um, in fact, that section is really cool because in the original, we just had the vocals and the synthesizer in the background was holding out chords and just doing a simple chord, four chord progression. Here, the synthesizer is bouncing between a couple of notes and panning. And I think the two notes that it was bouncing between, that it was oscillating between, that's a good word for that, changed with the chord progression. But I can't quite remember if that's true, so let me know if I'm wrong on that. But don't hold me to it either. <laughs> I kind of expected more metal out of this. This stuck to the original quite a bit more than I expected. But it does do its own things from time to time. And it's, like I said, it's a really interesting cover. It is what feels a bit more like an arrangement than anything else, including the fact that especially in classical music, when somebody arranges a work, sometimes things need to be added or removed. I don't think it's usually as drastic of a change as what we saw here. But if we were to use classical terminology, I think I'd still probably use the term an arrangement for this. Most of the original ideas are here. There's been a lot of elements removed in order to accommodate the smaller instrumental range that we have for Paradise Lost. And there's been some slight alterations to ideas in order to better accommodate presumably the style they're aiming for. It's unmistakably still missing. But it's a new version of it. And that's exactly what arrangements can be. You can certainly do a one-to-one. -one. Well, if you do a one-to-one, -one, that's just you're playing it. <laughs> We don't usually use the word covers in the classical realm. It's just a performance of this piece and another one. An arrangement would specify that things have been changed, usually for instrumentation. If you have, if you take a, a thing for a string quartet and give it to 
uh, a brass quartet, that's an arrangement. You've had to arrange the track for new instruments. So, yeah, I don't think we've talked about that much. Maybe I'll save that for my theme thoughts this Saturday. I'm kind of exploring. I think we've done that before. But I'll do it again just in case there's uh, people who haven't seen it before. But uh, covers is a very mainstream genre thing. We don't really have covers in classical music or even jazz music. With so many uh, standards, it's expected to have millions of versions of the same song. Even if the per people who write it play it two nights in a row, you're going to hear a very different version of it in those two nights. The idea of, of not having a definitive version of a song is a, a modern take on things. And uh, we'll probably explore some terminology that's adjacent to covers in that theme thoughts. Uh, back to this, though. Alright, so I mentioned that they tapped into the darkness. The original does have a moodiness to it. I said that the chord progression, the emotional resonance in the atmosphere, it's dreary, and they explored an isolation through spaciousness. Paradise Lost kind of goes in those same directions. My, my brain's all over the place. I was like, wait, you got to remember to bring up the wood block. I was like, but we already talked about things that were kept and things that weren't kept. Uh, the time's kind of passed. And he's like, but it's important. I'm like, is it though? Is it? <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah. Moodiness, spaciousness. They do explore these. They lean a lot more into the darkness of it, though. I'm not going to say that this feels more melancholic. I don't necessarily think that that's the word for this. It's definitely a sadness. But I do think it leans more into a gloom, a darkness regarding this. It's not that this version is any sadder than the original, it's just that this version is... It, it showcases the darkness of this, the emptiness more... more physically? More prominently. There we go. I mentioned that the idea of something missing was baked into the original's song. The spaciousness of it all mixed with the somber atmosphere and the lyrics represents somebody who has a hole in their life. Something was present and is not anymore. Paradise Lost says, what if we musically make that gaping hole? What does it look like? What does it feel like? And so they have something that is very wide. It's very dark in timbre, aside from the violin towards the end and the rise in pitch for the melody line towards the end of the track. A lot of this is very grounded. It uh, uses darker tones, wider tones, and lower pitches. It has this seeping element to it where it feels like we're picturing a black hole sucking a bunch of stuff in and getting bigger. The melancholy can certainly come from that, and we see a tinge of it towards the end, but again, to me, the main element here is darkness, emptiness. What does that feel like? And so they explore the song from that perspective, which is where a majority of the vibes here come from. From that perspective, I think that the bridge is interesting. It does the same thing, vocal and synth, but because of the lower vocals, because the synth is bouncing around, it's creating more pockets of space. Space. That space is being manipulated as the song or as the synth moves to the left, the spaciousness is on the right. You can feel this emptiness over here, and then it gets shifted over, and now you feel the emptiness on this side. That kind of lines up too. As I mentioned, that spaciousness was a big thing in the old one, and it mixed with all the layers. 
sort of, at least to me, told me a story of somebody who still has a busy life, lots of things going on, maybe lots of people in their life, but there's still something missing and that hole can't be filled by all the noises. And it's, it's what creates the spaciousness in the song despite all the layers. Here, we don't have a lot of layers, but the layers we do have are large. They no longer represent the people in the narrator's life. They represent this gaping hole, this darkness, this something that was missing, something torn out of them. It seeps and expands and grows, and that's where we get the bridge. This has pure emptiness. Granted, it's usually channel by channel. But there are moments when the left or the right side sound fairly devoid of sound, based on when the synthesizer is not there. It represents a, a darkness, a missing component that is moving and sucking out the joy in so many different sections of this person's life. That's how I feel about the bridge. And I think it's interesting that they came about that through the use of the same instrumentation. They change a little bit of the production, a little bit of the uh, composition, and they come out with a very different section that says something totally different to me. And a lot of it bounces off of what the core song feels and sounds like as well. Now, I haven't quite pieced together the ending. I don't want to necessarily call it bombastic, but it does reach a bit more of what we heard from the original with plenty of layers present. The vocalist does showcase a bit higher range pitch going on, uh, manipulating the melody up a bit, and we do get some beautiful harmonies as well. It is noisier, but it also retains the fullness of sound that we've had on all of our instruments throughout the track, and it doesn't quite have the spaciousness despite layered vibe that the original had. It just feels like a very full song. It feels like there's nothing missing at all. Given that Paradise Lost in the past I have praised for the connectivity between their musical ideas and their themes, and that 70% of this track lines up with that as well, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say I probably missed something about this ending. However, my initial reaction says that it isn't complimentary. The ideas they explored to begin with aren't lining up here and the story doesn't quite fit. My best guess is that this is the darkness closing in and filling up. This is that hole, that gaping element of their life, taking the joy out of everything, making it so that they feel that they must go down the street and look at this house in order to revisit some memories because it's the only positive thing in their life. At one point in the lyrics, even says, I don't know why I'm doing this. Oh, wait, did that line get removed? Yeah, verse three of the original says, back on the train, I ask, why did I come again? Can I confess I've been hanging around your old address? And the years have proved to uh, have proved to offer nothing since you moved. We went over this verse, but I just didn't go over those first two lines. This entire verse is missing from Paradise Lost. We get the intro that says, "I walk down your street. You don't live here anymore. You've disappeared. Found someplace better." The second verse, "Could you be dead?" It talks about the history. You know, I I can almost hear you shouting down from your window. And then we revisit our first one about stepping off the train and walking down the street. Yeah, so we're missing that third verse. Which I think is interesting because it was going to house the line 
that helped me piece together this one aspect I'm kind of lost on, and they, they didn't even sing it. Um, but yeah, the original lyrics, the person doesn't even know why they come around here anymore. But I think it's pretty clear that there's an element of the grief process to this ritual. Since they haven't accepted that this person's moved on, maybe there's a chance when they drop by, they'll be here again. Also, as mentioned in the second verse, they have some nostalgia here. It brings them a little bit of joy to walk down memory lane, and a lot of that's triggered by being in front of this place. And it does feel to me from that perspective, I didn't pick this up in the original because it really wasn't that strong of an element in the writing, but having the darkness be so present, it does feel like the joy has been sucked out. It's not so much that all the multiple layers of life aren't presented here, it's that the narrator themselves doesn't even feel that anymore. It's not about feeling alone within all the noise of living and going to work and, and all this. It's literally about all that being drowned out by the sorrow. This, where the first feels more about uh, trying to get through the grieving process, this feels like being stuck in depression. It's interesting how the lyrics work for both of those. I really love that. You know, it's kind of funny. When I got done listening to this, in my mind, I was thinking, yeah, you know, there's 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 some some emotional elements, some atmospheric elements that are changed here, but a lot of the composition is the same. And I thought back to Yes from last week and how even though I wasn't a real big fan of it, uh, of their rendition of Simon and Garfunkel's America, it's still really the only total reimagining we've had these weeks. There's been a lot of just playing the same thing someone else played with different instrumentation or sound or maybe screaming over it instead. A lot of it compositionally, though, has been pretty close. And... Here we have another song where there's a lot of compositional elements brought over. and It even feels less like a Paradise Lost song to me than I expected, given some of the timbre choices. But here I am at the end of it, thinking, man, this is a very different take on these lyrics. And I think it's awesome that they explored the sound not just through what they added, but again, what they retained. It's not just taking the lyrics and writing a brand new song around it. There are new elements, for sure, but there's still a lot of compositional ideas that mirror back to the original. And I think that makes it even stronger of a cover, not just because there are elements where I can say, oh look, it's the same bass line but because it's a reinterpretation of those elements. They heard this darkness in some parts and said we need to keep those, and did it in others and said it's okay if we get rid of them, and they created a song that is very much still missing, but found a completely different perspective on it. I'm really glad we got to check this one out. Those are my thoughts. Paradise Lost's version of Missing. What are yours? Let me know if you enjoyed this track. If there's anything that stood out to you. Maybe you have your own perspective or opinion on it. Put all those thoughts down in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. Take you to this menu, you can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, some special selection and some sounds from my inbox. That'll be at 5 p.m. EST, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. 
Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.